Welcome back everybody. We have another bus here and we did a roof raise on it. This guy right here. So let's go see how we did it. Please like, share and subscribe and all that other stuff and uh, yeah, help us along. Thank you. This is the bus we're going to do another roof raise on. She just came today. 2001 Freightliner, a little different chassis than the last one they did a roof raise on, so it should be interesting. Still looks pretty easy to do. Little army-ish color over here and school bus on the other side. do the transition right at the white part of the front there yeah. dark on this side so here's our bus we're gonna start the roof raise on you can see it still has all the windows in it um, the interior is pretty much stripped out like I said, other than the windows. So the first thing we're gonna do is take all these screws out along here, along this whole uh, channel to get the windows out. These, these trim pieces are gonna come off. These are gonna come off and they are all screwed on, no, not riveted on, which is good. One thing I found is with the impact here some of these I started already right here a little bit taking some of these out if you put the gun on number three setting right there that's one two three three which is maximum torque you get lots of torque and Sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't. And if it over torques and strips the head out, then you're kind of done. So this is, this one's broke off. Just spins. These ones are stripped out, heads are stripped out. So instead of being on number three, do it on number one there, number one torque setting. And then, you don't have a whole bunch of power, but you have a little bit of impact right away. Like that. And the head, the driver will stay engaged in the screw head better rather than just over torquing and stripping it. See, gives a couple little impacts and comes out without stripping the head. So yeah, all those to do. All these uprights to do, these pieces here to take off, then we'll take the windows out. We'll show you that later. And even though these screws look like they're Phillips, see with the star shape there for some of the other people. That one. These will take a Robertson driver. Let's see if I'm talented enough to get that. Nope. See, Robertson will fit in there and it provides a little more drive, I guess, a little more engagement to get the screws out. If all you have is a Phillips, use that, I guess. But if you have a, a square Robertson, use that instead. So I have most of the windows out already inside here. And probably everybody already knows, but they're held in by these little tabs here, like that. One there. One there, and then they just joined together two windows, right? And the post in the middle. And then <clears throat> take a knife, cut the sealant all the way around the sides and the top. Then, there we go. screwdrivers and you'll find a gap on one side 
pry in there. I'm not really concerned about saving the windows. The frame bends a little bit, but they just pop out like that. Break the sealant on the bottom. Give her a yank. And that's it. Two more there, and then the safety windows here, I guess. I don't know, it has some wire going to a micro switch down here at the latch, and I'll show you that in a little bit. So here's the switch that's in the emergency exit windows and this little switch is mounted in here you can see it has a little plunger on it there and the wiring just goes along the rail or the edge here of the frame up here and then out to the bus wiring and these this is i think the only windows well on this bus and my other ones anyways this these windows are secured with screws through the top here so that they're grounded, the frame is grounded. And this switch, the way it activates is, sits in there like that. This little red lever goes in here like this way, in there. And then when you put this down, pushes on that little plunger there and then the buzzer goes off off as in not buzzing then when you open this the window is the switch is open so the alarm sounds and that's how these work so if you just ground the wire that comes to this little switch onto the bus frame it won't activate the alarm pretty easy and the screws that didn't cooperate with the drill driver impact thingy have to deal with this now and we're gonna win ear protection gloves um, face shield Just that easy. See these panels that I'm taking off here, these trim pieces, these are not going to go back on, so it doesn't matter if they get damaged a little bit. So now we have all the screws out with the air hammer and yes we won so now we need to take these off these have some fancy glue in here it's pretty tough so they are stuck on pretty well this guy what they look like and then we're just left with that hat channel oh okay I really wanted to come off had me ducking yep that glue is tough There, all these upright pieces or trim pieces are off and 
these I've pried up all the edges where they overlap so these all just need to come off I'll show you that after I get them off there this side's all off let's go in here and see so after you take that trim off it exposes the side panel here with the rub rail on it and part of where the window frame is and the hat channel that we need to work with this is what it looks like with the trim on it and it overlaps right there so you need to pry from the back first see if you can do this one-handed maybe maybe not let's pry these up And they come out of that slot right there just like that and then this piece here that overlaps they've cut off here already and it would have been the trim panel that went down to here inside and that needs to come off too and that just should just pop off there just like that so that glue works pretty good crazy how tough that stuff is so I have this side to get off yet make a mess over there and then clean all this extra sealant off the edges here off the hat channels this stuff comes off pretty easily yeah so what we need to do is just expose the panels like this so when we put the new skin on it'll just tuck right underneath the rub rail here or it'll sit on top and everything will be riveted back together and yeah we'll go from there so now we have all them trim pieces off you can see and we've just exposed the side with the hat channel so we need to get off all the extra sealant off all the uprights as well as up here the top especially and we need to go on the outside and Make sure that area up in there is clean because the new side skin is going to tuck up in there. And to go along with that, I'm going to put a piece of angle across on here so that the skin has somewhere to sit on to and seal better. Otherwise, it only has this little lip up there. So, yeah, I just have a little more cleaning to do and clean that sealant out of there. And then I think we'll get these pieces here come so after all the side uh, tin pieces are taken off windows are out you need to remove all this uh, epoxy stuff or a seam sealer whatever they use between the panels maybe panel bond it is I don't know but it is tough this stuff is tough so I've got see I have that one yet to do and that one and that one and that one I've cleaned already. I've cleaned the rest of these. So the surface is clean for new adhesive for the new panels. And what I'm using is either this wire wheel for some of it or this uh, sanding disc on this four and a half inch grinder. That works good too. And you can see I've made these uh, pieces here cut them up out of angle iron drill some holes in them these are going to be what holds the panels at the top of the windows and I'll show you when I get them painted and installed what they look like so there you can see I have them filler strips across the top already on this side like I talked about earlier somewhere for the outer panel to secure to because once you take the windows and the frame and everything out, there's nowhere to secure the panel at the top. So let's go inside here and have a look. They are just riveted up there. And how I put them on was, I just strapped this piece of flat bar on the outside here, vice gripped it on, and then I vice gripped the 
piece of angle iron to that piece and then it's up flush and it's flush with this edge here too then once that's up there it gives this panel here somewhere to secure to and makes a good seal at the top otherwise there's nowhere to secure it and you don't really know if you have a good seal across here if you don't do this this way you can put a good bead of Zika Flex across the top there and you know for sure that it's sealed. Yeah, so I have this side all done, just working on this side. These are just pieces of inch and a half angle iron. It was cheaper to get, just use angle iron than it was to get pieces bent and cut them to the right length. So. This is just off the shelf angle iron. It's a little bit more probably than what it needs to be, but at least it's not less, right? Should work. I know it'll work. Let's go to finish this side. And then we have a box of hat channels there. So we'll get onto that after we get this up here, get the back figured out where to separate it, and we'll go from there. So the plan here to separate this is to remove this row of rivets here and then it'll separate the two panels here and this part will go up, this part will stay here. And on the inside, I think we're gonna remove this whole panel here. So we have to take out all these rivets here. These ones across the top here and these ones back here and then that panel will come off and then i can just build a whole new panel from there up to 17 inches higher and that'll be all one piece or it'll be part of the whole new panel starting from there and going 10 feet forward so we'll see how that works out but either way it has to come off because this hat channel has to be cut somewhere so you need access to weld the new pieces in there so that has to go and the corner's pretty easy you can see right i don't know if you can see can you maybe right across there there's already a seam where it's been welded so i think i'll just cut it again right across there and then lift everything up and then i'll just build another piece that mimics this and put some other reinforcing or backing on the whole thing up there and then this is where on the outside where I showed you that row of rivets is going to come out where it's going to get separated and this will get this little channel will get cut I'll probably use some square tubing from here up to here once the roof is raised them three spots there and the same over here this is a Thomas built bus so this is what it looks like in the back we should have a flashlight over there. So again, this panel here will be removed. Roll rivets up there. Two rows there. One row there. A couple screws on the outside where the rub rail is. Get rid of that. Chop it across there. And yeah, the back should be able to be removed. And I'll just... These wires going up here, I'll just cut all the zip ties and they can stay here. They'll still reach up to the marked lights and stuff when they want to put it back together, put the lights back on, but that's that side, that end and the front will be cut probably right there. So we leave a flange here that I can bend up to go to the transition that's going to go up to the top. Actually, sorry, this will be the top. This will be the transition that goes down. So this will be bent from here to there on an angle down here. It'll go down to the bus here, the roof at the top. And this, probably cut there. And it'll be bent up so that it'll go up to that transition. I can bend this flange up so that it has somewhere better to secure to. I can weld some structure in there and yeah. This will be cut across there somewhere, all the way down there. Air hammer! 
safety gloves, safety glasses, hearing protection. And that's how easy it is. One handed too. So we have all those out up there. And all these out on this panel up there too. Those are all out, so we should be able to take all that panel off and that top piece, poke all them rivets out, go from there. We can see we're all trimmed and we're ready to raise the roof. We're going up 17 inches. Um, the front is just cut across right here and up here. That's all that's holding these two. So this will stay here. This part will go up and then we'll just reattach it to the side here. The same on that side. And I've put these pieces of tubing up here. They're wired there so they can't fall down. This 4x4 four four is also wired around there so it can't fall down if the jack gets loose. Uh, these are all in here, six of these, weight, weight uh, support dealies, there's the jack in the back, I've undone the wire harness from the side there, you can see it just laying down there because it's not going to be able to go up 17 inches, not enough slack at the front, and the back here, not a whole bunch holding this together, all there is is from here to there, this is raised up a little bit already, so I just zipped off there and there and across right there. I've taken all the rivets out around the outside there, all the way around there. Trimmed it right there and you can see it's loose. All that's, all that's really holding the back together is right there and right there. Not a whole bunch of support back here, so when I get it up 17 inches there, we're going to add a whole bunch of more support back here, make it safer, make some uh, lateral support side to side. You need to have the support to hold this when it's 17 inches higher. And yeah, I don't think there's anything else in here to show you, so we will... Do a time lapse probably, set you down out there, and we'll go up 17 inches and see how long that takes. I may or may not do it by myself. We'll see. It's pretty easy, not too bad. Well, there it is 17 inches taller took 25 minutes by myself once everything was ready and set up just to jack it up the front and the back and then the six uh weight jackers there just to support it yeah so we're gonna weld a couple pieces together and continue on 
So here's the hat channels I had formed at a local uh, welding shop. They were able to bend these how I wanted them. And these are 17 inches long because we're doing a 17 inch raise. And these pieces, I've drilled a half inch hole in here and I've marked them in the center here. So they're gonna go right in there like that. Clamp it down to the table. Then there's equal distance um, overhang, I guess protrusion out here then when it goes in the existing hat channels this will go in there you can weld all the way around here as well as up there and that'll give it a good strong weld so we'll just put these in here and we'll weld them in there you can see it's just a uh, plug weld in there and we'll do the same once we put it up on top so I have how many of these 24 of these to do and yeah I'll show you I guess when I get these up in there I'm gonna weld all these together first and then we'll install some there you can see that's what I used to make sure that the hat channel and the extensions are flat there's a piece of flat bar here with a piece of angle iron. Make sure that it's smooth. And then when it's all clamped together, it'll hold that straight. You can see that's how they slip in there. There's uh, one down here that's welded together through the uprights, the support part. Plus uh, all across the side. So yeah, out of 24, I have five left on each side to do. Yeah, she's getting there. As you can see, I have a panel on here already. It's already riveted. It's been sealed behind it with Cicaplex. The window's cut out there, small window. Rear panel's on and riveted, looks pretty good. The back panels are on. All finished. This one we're just getting ready to put on here. I've put Zika Flex all the way around the outside, quite a bit on the top there, down every post here. Probably will help a little bit with the rattling and secure the panel to the side, quite a bit across the bottom there. So, yeah, we'll just throw the panel up there, and uh, what we do is put the panel up there. Then I have a couple of these, just 3 16 uh, little rod here. We'll just put it in there, secure it. And then at the front, we will put some C-clamps here, just hold it to the side of the bus. But here's the panel. You can see it's already been up there, pre-drilled, painted. Yeah, this thing's gonna look pretty good. And there's the next panel that's already been pre-fit, windows cut out, holes are drilled. Works pretty easy doing it this way, smaller panels, five foot long. Yeah, we'll show you a little bit later when we get uh, some more done. I guess there's the inside, looks pretty good. Way more support in there than what it had before. Yeah, I'll show you some more later. You ready, Betsy? Just gonna file my nails and then I see you coming out. You were gonna what? <laughs> file my nails and what? then I see you coming out. You're gonna get Sika Flex under your nails. No, no sense never. filing them now. That's what gloves are for. What? I was flipping rocks. Flipping what? Rocks. Whoa, <laughs> flipping rocks and filing your nails. Yep, looking for ants. Yikes. Okay. <laughs> I'm ready.
There, there's two panels on this side. It's 10 feet. Sikaflex sealed, riveted. After it's dry, I'll clean up these edges and put some tape on here and make that look good. Make it look like this corner. So all these panels are pretty straightforward. They just put them up, drill holes, uh, deburr the holes, Sikaflex, rivets. Except this front panel where it meets the transition up there and right here to secure it. So what I've done on the front, I've bent a flange here. I don't know if you can see that very well, probably. And then it meets up to the other flange that's already on here. So these are squeezed together. These will be bolted together. And here's what the other flange looks like right here. So let's go outside and I'll show you how I how I uh, went about that. So this is the piece right here that's already cut and it's gonna go right there right behind the driver's window. And how I did the flange on this 16 gauge stuff is a little harder to bend. So I just made a mark across here and then just a little uh, notch in it with the zip disc. Just like that, not even halfway through, just, just enough to mark it. And then I'm gonna take it over here. You could bend it on the side of the table, I've done that. That works pretty good too. But I'm just gonna set it up in my bender here, bend the flange up. It still takes quite a bit to bend it because this isn't meant for 16 gauge steel. That's why the notch in the uh, flange there with the zip disc. So yeah, I'm gonna go bend that and I'll show you when I'm done. And there's that flange bent, it's three quarter inch long. That way there's somewhere for the two panels to join together and there's a flange there that I can run Sikaflex across and that'll seal the front corner right up there all the way to the top so yeah this works pretty good I've also showed you this before but there's a piece of angle iron at the top there and that'll seal the top flange I'm going to take out the first two rivets there and first two rivets up there and then this panel will go underneath here underneath that and underneath up there it'll rivet to this panel it'll all be sealed and nicely secured should work out perfect see this one I just have set up here just sitting on these little tabs to hold it there and I'll clamp it here and drill the holes then we'll take it off put some primer on put it back on and then we're just about done with the big panels. Then we can go up there to the roof. See, so I have all that structure up there done. That's five feet wide, so I'm hoping to do that in one piece. Five feet wide, and it's about 43 inches tall. So we're going to do the cardboard template, cut that out of steel, put it up there. It's going to work. It's going to work great. So let's look at the front transition that I did. The rest of the bus, the roof raise, you just cut it, um, weld in some hat channels, seek a flex, put on the panels, thousand rivets, pretty easy. So let's look at how I did the front uh, transition here. You can see I've put five uh, inch and a half square tubing pieces up there. These ones here line up with the existing bracing that's on the roof and they go up to where there's a <clears throat> reinforcement piece on top of the roof. Some buses have them reinforcement pieces inside from hat channel to hat channel, some are outside, but yeah, I've lined those up so they are 
pretty well supporting the transition. There's some bracing there side to side, some more there side to side. There's five pieces, like I said, and this is about um, five feet across there. So I'm going to cut all these pieces for the transition out of a 5 by 10 sheet of uh, 16 gauge. So that's going to be one piece. That's going to be one piece. And that's going to be one piece. So I'm going to do the side pieces first. And then this piece here will overlap that piece. And then hopefully the seam won't allow any leakage when you're going down the road. As you can see, I've made a template there. Um, I have welded these back on there, straightened them out, welded them on. Yeah, the tubing is fully welded. It's 100 wall tubing. So let's go outside here. I'll show you the template I made. So there's the template. Fits pretty well, it's gonna look good. Oh, I forgot to tell you, I have bent up, I've left some of the flange here, right there. I can't reach it, I don't think. But right there, you can see I've left part of the uh, skin from the bus and I've bent it up to match this angle here so that this front edge here We'll rivet it down here and it has a good structure to be supported to. It looks pretty clean. And then this piece here, I'm going to put it all up here. Right here across this tubing will be, this skin will be welded to it. And then this piece here at the top, once it's all on here and riveted, I'm just going to tap it down and rivet it and it'll stay flat. It'll look good and sealed. So yeah, that's what the transition looks like in cardboard. And let's go out here. I have marked these all on a sheet of five by 10. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I've already cut out that one piece where the template is on the right hand side. There's the left hand side, and that's going to be the piece across the top that's just about four feet wide. So, how I've bent this, or like I said, I've already cut that one piece out. I've put this in here, clamp a piece of pipe to a table. Bigger piece would be better because then you won't get any sharp kinks. But I've made a template of what the top of the bus looks like up there. And this is kind of it right there. Bend it till it kind of matches that. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to ratchet strap it down and make sure it's tight and secure before it's riveted. So, yeah, just put this in here like this. Lift up on here. Go slowly, move a little bit at a time. And it'll make a nice rounded edge here that you can work with. Yeah, so the next thing is to do, take that template off the top there and put this up there and strap it down, see how it fits. So I'll show you that when I get that up there. There, you can see I've put this side up here and I've drilled a couple holes here, this one here with a, just a 3 16th rod in it just to locate it. And one there, I've marked out where the holes are gonna be along the bottom and the top front edge and i have it secured there with a ratchet strap a couple pieces of old wood and yeah you can see it fits pretty nice so i'm going to take it down now drill the holes across the front here the bottom i have some marked across there where i need to see that line there they need to be on that side and then this edge here will be just tack welded across there. I'll drill some holes across the top here and just plug weld that on there. Because the panel that's going to go over top will be riveted down right across there. So no reason to put rivets in there right now. So yeah, we'll take it down, drill some holes. 
and then move the two by fours and the strap around so that it's tight at the front put some Sika flex under there before I put it back on and yeah so remember I had the panel up there and had it kind of fitting marked out where the holes are gonna be took it down redrilled all the holes in the sides and it's ready to go up there I put a good bead of uh, Sika flex to do one around the whole perimeter of it where it's gonna go down especially right across where the holes are make sure you get Sika flex or whatever sealant you're using I guess into the holes and it'll seal the holes so the next thing is to put it up there and throw a few rivets in it clamp it down again with the strap and some two by sixes so we'll show you when I get that far there I put it up here just temporary well not temporary now it's gonna be permanent actually I put a few rivets in the bottom here just to hold it into position as well as the little uh, guide tool I guess and uh, you can see the Sika flex is sticking out there and it's squished down tight here because of these tension on these boards in the strap and you can see there's Sika flex coming out the holes here so you know it's squished down all the way and a little bit of extra tension on it I drilled a hole over here on an angle actually angle this way so when you put this punch in here and you push it over that way it pulls it tighter and then I clamped it did that on the top and one on the bottom here pulled it over clamped it so these holes here will just be plug welds to hold this here and then the rest the other skin will go on top of this so I'm gonna put the rivets in all the way around here and up there and you can see I have the holes pre-drilled up here so I'm gonna after the rest are in tap this down Got a little hammer yes I do you just go here tap it a little bit down and then put the screw or the rivets in go a little more two more rivets in a little more down two more rivets in and eventually it'll be tight sucked right down and it'll form and look like what the roof looks like so yeah she's looking pretty good what do you think let me know what you think is that a good way to do it is there a better way the strap works pretty good yeah I've just hooked the strap up there and then when I do the other side I'll do the same thing as this and then the center I'll just strap right across there because it doesn't need to curve very much and it'll go down easily there you can see I have the rivets all across the bottom here and up that side and pretty much across the front here and also you can see the Sika flex squishing out of there that means we have a good seal shouldn't have any leaks so the top here like I said we hammer it down make it contour to the bus I've done this area here already so all you do I've, I've hammered this right here down already and drilled a hole and put four rivets in so you can feel it's pretty solid so it bends pretty easily the <clears throat> I have tension on these again with this strap and this is tight against the skin of the bus here at the corner so all we're doing is bending this lip down and you can hear that it's pretty solid
there. Just do that and form it to the curve of that corner there. I don't know how much this would have done for you guys. Pretty noisy in your ears. I guess we'll see. Makes a little bit of a mess and it squishes out the Cicaflex, but at least you know what's in there. Yeah, so I'm gonna put these three, drill these three holes there, put these three rivets in, and then hammer three more down and put that in. Don't do the whole thing, try and do the whole thing at once. And then later on, we can smooth out the Sika Flex around this corner here, and it'll be a pretty nice solid joint. Should be awesome. <clears throat> there you can see this side is done. It's all tapped down and riveted in it. Uh, Secret Flex is wiped off. You can see it follows the contour of the roof pretty nicely. Once it's all dry, I'll put in another little bit of seal sealant in here, Sika Flex, just to smooth out this seam a little bit all the way around there. But I've wiped it off with a little bit of, uh, <clears throat> what is it? Wax and grease remover, yes. Works to wipe the Cicaplex off and smooth it out. So that's what I did. Wiped it across there. Yeah, so I have the other side to do. After this is dry, I'll run a bead across the top there too, once the, the other panel's on. So I'll have to put a couple of tack welds across the inside there. Do the other side. I'm gonna do the other side. I'm not gonna show you guys that because it's pretty much exactly what this side is. And then I'll show you the middle part. I have the panel here that's gonna go in the center up there. I pre-drilled all the holes. And yes, there's a lot of them. I've also deburred all the holes. So this is just a deburring bit. Simply just put it in there, take the burrs off. I've showed you this before, but I think it's pretty important. Gets all the little burrs away, helps the rivet to go through. This is I'm going to put up there and pre-drill all the holes before I seal it. This piece here is just going to be flat, I think, with the, just with a strap, ratchet strap across the top. It'll conform to the top there because it doesn't really have a whole bunch of curve. There, you can see I have the center panel up. You've seen earlier that I made the templates and had them all cut out. Center pieces up there. All the holes are drilled. Let's go see what it looks like out here. And there it is. All the holes are drilled. I put a strap here just to secure it. I drilled a couple holes in each side and then put these locator pins in here so it wouldn't move when I was drilling the rest of the holes. Um, some magnets on each side to hold it down. yeah that's what it looks like looks pretty good so all the holes are pre-drilled like i said so now it's take it off there clean the drill bit filings i guess i only broke two drill bits drilling all these holes not bad and i'll slide it back up onto the roof put some seca flex underneath it slide it back down locate it with those pins again and then put all the rivets in before we crimp any of them. There you can see I slid the panel up there. I cleaned all the shavings off of everywhere that I, holes I pre-drilled. Put Sika Flex and seam sealer on some. Use seam sealer in the middle and Sika Flex around the outside. It'll all work pretty good. And I've tried to get the seam sealer or Sika Flex along the row of holes that I drilled. So each one of those will get sealed. Yeah, gob the bunch on the front. It'll spit some out, so at least we know there's a good seal there. And then the top, I'll squeeze some underneath the panel from the back side before I tap it down like I did the sides. We just slide her down, put in about 50 rivets. I'll show you that in a bit. There, we're up on the front of the roof here. All the rivets are in. They went in pretty easily. Again, the strap is holding the top up and these magnets are holding the sides down. So yeah, we get 
Grimpin' Rivets. I think you've all seen that before, but you can see it sucks it down. Push down. Start in the middle. Work your way out. There, I'll do the rest by myself and not bore you guys with 60 more rivets to cramp. I just want to show you this here one more time. You can see the Cicaflex is squished out of there. Watch when I crimp this one. It squishes out, so that kind of tells you that there's a good seal there. And you can see it squeezes down tight. Should be trouble free, no leaks. There, we're back again today. I let this panel dry overnight. You can see the outer panels are pounded down there to conform to the top of the bus shape. Now we just need to do this piece. I have squeezed some Cicaflex underneath that joint up from the top, as well as some uh, seam sealer from inside. So when the slip gets pushed down, it's gonna squeeze the sealer out just like it did on the outsides. So it's pretty easy. <clears throat> you just tap it down here, right? Till it's smooth and whatever looks smooth the best. Drill a hole, put rivets in. So let's try that and see what it looks like. I'm just starting in the middle on this one. Those other ones I started on the on one end, but I think in the middle on here is better. see the Sika Flex is squeezing out there and these two here are pretty well flat with the top of the bus so we'll start there drill two holes and put some rivets in It's pinched down or crimp, they pull the panel down too. Yeah, beauty! So we just keep going all along there. One or two holes at a time, whatever, when one looks flat, drill a hole rivet that one and then uh, move on to the next one so these holes are not really nice to drill because inside where the hat channel is I reinforced a little bit so it's not just through hole it might be on the edge of somewhere like that right on the edge of the hat channel it looks like. So 
yeah, that's that process. And I will finish the rest and show you guys what it looks like when it's all down. There, she's all massaged down, I guess. Sounds better than getting hammered down, right? Or pounding, massaged. Kind of messy where the Cicaflex, um gets squished out, but like I said, then you know how you have a good seal. So I just have some paper towel here. I'm just gonna wipe off the extra messy part here. Move it around a little so we know there's some in that seam there. Yeah, like that. have a little bit of uh, wax and grease remover here with a rag. Just gonna wipe it off a little bit here and it smooths it out too a little bit. I know I'm all jerky up here but it's an awkward place. We will call that good for now. Let it dry for a day. Come up here and put another layer on, finish it off nice and make it look good. And then we'll throw some paint on her. So that's it. Let's get rid of this stuff. Throw her down, we don't need that up here anymore. Yeah, that's it. Whole roof transition is sheeted over. Looks pretty nice. It's gonna look spectacular when it's painted. Yeah, beauty. So the last thing we have to do is the windows. I've already put some in. I'll show you how I did. Uh, how I sealed them, how I secured them, and we used butyl tape. You can see it's squishing out there around the bottom. This window here is an existing or original one out of the back door or back beside the door, I guess. And this one here is a beauty. Hey, eh? you can see the butyl tape squishing out the side too. I've already trimmed it off the bottom here. Just take a razor blade and trim it off there, make it flush. But I think I'll let it sit for another day and squish out a little more, much ever it wants to, because the windows have a little bit of tension on them. <clears throat> and here's the last window to go in. I've just put butyl tape around the outside here. And to secure them, just used these washers because I made this frame around the outside one inch square tubing it lines up with the edge of the window and all it is is a fender washer bigger washer with a stainless steel screw and yeah, you just tighten it up and it sucks the window in because there's tension right there so it pulls the window in. 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 13, 14 screws holding this big window in. And that'll secure it very nicely. And that's the, one of the back windows. This one here is a where their bathroom's going to be. Can't see back here very well, but. That one's in there, that one's in there. This one I'm gonna do right now, 
and this one's in here already. Yeah, they're pretty nice windows. They're brand new. And yeah, I think this this way of securing them looks pretty good. And they'll just build their trim around the outside to this edge here. Yeah, should work good. Okay, I'm going to put this last one in here and then I'll show you what it looks like. There, this last window is in. You can see what I showed you on the cart here when I put the uh, butyl tape around the outside edge. I just set the window up in the frame there and then I secured it with these magnets here and that holds it in there. And then I went inside and oh, it's pretty dark. Anyways, I put these uh, washers, fender washers and screws in there. Again, 14 in the bigger windows. And I used uh, six by three quarter stainless screws, self-tapping screws and these fender washers to secure the window in. So now I just have that butyl tape around the edge to trim off. Make sure that it looks like it's squeezed out everywhere, which it does look like it. And yeah, we are almost done. Got a couple little edges to touch up with some sealant. Like back here. You can see I did this here. I want to do the top, finish the top edge there. And then we are done. We are done this beast. Hey. Which looks pretty good. It's the beauty when it's painted. Do you have anything you want to say there, young lady? No. This uh, bus is very similar to the bus that we already own. Yes, it is, except this one is now 17 inches taller. <laughs> <laughs>